Hello everyone, hello, hello, it is me, your girl Salome, and welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and so should you. Amen, I'll be glad in it. We are alive. Everything might not be going according to our plan, but listen, we ought to be grateful and rejoice that we are still living, we are breathing, we are having our being, and it is all because of God. Amen? Amen. Hi, everyone. Um, how are you guys doing? I hope everything is going okay, going good. And when I say good, I don't mean good and perfect. I mean, all things are working out for your good because you love God and because you are called according to his purpose. Amen. And that scripture is taken from Romans 8 verse 28. And that's one of my, you know, we have a lot of favorite scriptures, but that one um, I, I I really am I'm drawn to because I recognize that it's not always going to be fine and dandy all the time. It's not always going to be glittery all the time. Amen. And even before the glitter, it had to go through a process like gold. Amen. Gold had to go through the process too in order for us to be able to wear it and dress up and, you know, and, 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 and have everything that we need. We had to go through a process. Gold went through fire, had to go through fire, had to, all the impurities had to be burnt out and, and so we can have the purity of gold, which is very, very, very valuable. So we understand out of the process, there is a value out of the process. Amen. Amen. So today I'm coming to you. I promise I will not be before you long. I have been just thinking about this word. Um, the other day um, I was given a theme at church. Um you know, in conducting our certain Sunday service. And the theme was launch out into the deep. And I was studying it for a while. And it's, it is a theme or a part of the scripture that I've always read. I've always, um, that has always interests me. All the Bible interests me, but I took, um, a, a, I went a little deeper into it. And um, it was taken from St. Luke where it talked about, the Peter, Peter, who was, of course, who was a fisherman and, um, and he did that for a living. And Peter also was one of Jesus's disciples. And it came to a point where Peter was fishing all night and the disciples were toiling all night and, but they didn't catch anything. And so, uh, when Jesus, um, said to Peter to cast your net on the other side, that kind of took Peter by surprise. How many times God has told us to do something and we think we have it all together and we think that we know everything. Amen. And he says, do this. And it seems strange because I've always been doing this. Amen. But then Jesus came on the sea, on the scene and told Peter to cast his net on the other side, which he, he first said, but master, we've been toiling all night. This is what I do for a living. I, I fish. I'm a fisherman. And, 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 and there was no, no, no fish there. I laid my fish net down here. I've always laid it there. And I've always caught many fish. And so this particular time, Peter didn't, the particular night after the disciples had been toiling all night and Jesus came on the scene and said, cast your net on the other side. You want some real fish? Cast your net on the other side. You want some real blessings, some breakthrough for your situation? Cast your net on the other side. Get out of that stuck mentality, out of that stagnant mentality. And, and, and of course, you'll hear me go back and forth about Peter and the net. And you, you'll hear me um, uh, infuse or intertwine our, our situation that we go in, that we go through. I mean, cast our net on the other side. We've been doing the same thing over and over and we've been uh, uh, expecting different results, but it's not happening because we're not casting our net on the other side. And so I want to encourage you today, whatever the Lord said to do, could you go ahead and just do it? We don't know. We can't see ahead. We don't know what lies ahead. God knows. God knows he's the all-knowing, all-powerful, undisputed champion. He knows everything. 
And so in this particular instance, Peter said, we, I've been toiling all night. Didn't catch anything. I know the fish, I thought fish was here. I went over there. There was no fish. I put my net over there. There was no fish. But Jesus said, cast your net on the other side. And when Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, we have to be able to be, 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 um, um, what's the word I want to use? Be knowledgeable, be understanding. Amen. That's not the word that I'm looking for, but I'll let you know in a little while. We have to, we have to be, we have to be able to, to hear the word of the Lord, understand what God is saying and do what he's saying. And we have to be sensitive. That's the word sensitive to the word of God and what he is saying to us. And if he says to do something, it's because he knows that there's a blessing ahead. Amen. And sometimes it's not, the blessing is in the obedience. And so we have to recognize that we have to be obedient to the voice of God, to the word of God. Amen. I was listening to one of my, my really good friends, my brother, um, the other day, and he was talking about the reason why God does not speak to us anymore is because when he does speak to us, we are not obedient. And so he'll go to the next person and speak to the next person and just wait for you because you will be going around in circles trying to find the solution to your problem when in fact God spoke to you to do something or go somewhere and give something and you are not obedient to his voice and he'll just watch you going around in circles and making a fool of yourself while he's on the other side talking to someone else and they're being obedient and you see them getting blessed and and, and sometimes we see other people getting blessed and we're, we're we're like okay how come i've been here stuck in the same position stuck in the same place and there are other people who just came and then they're just flourishing they're being blessed Amen. Their house is being blessed. Their children are being blessed. Their marriages are being blessed. Their businesses are being blessed. They're just blessed all over. What's happening to me? Because I've had my chances. I've had my time when God was speaking to me and God was telling me to do this. Go here. Give this. And I have been disobedient. And because of that, I've been just going around in the wilderness. Amen. And complaining and complaining because I'm in that mentality where I'm stuck in my own ways. You can be so stuck in your own ways that the very thing that is right in front of you that you are looking for, you can't see it because you're stuck in the same mentality. Amen. My mom, my grandmother did this. My mama did this. And now I'm going to do it. I'm stuck. And so the Holy Spirit has been just dealing with me and just has been giving me the unction to pray that God will unstuck me. I want to be unstuck. I do not want to be in the same mentality, the same place in my life for years and years and years to come. I want to be unstuck. Hallelujah. I want God to unstuck me because I want my mind to be transformed. Amen. I recognize that it's with the mind that I serve God. And if my mind is not transformed, then I will be forever stuck. Can I get an amen? Amen. I don't want to be stuck. We have been in a cycle, the, the cycle of being unstuck. It's a cycle. We It goes around. We're at the same place. It's like the, it's like, we're the pinnacle and the, the world is just revolving around us and we're just right here. We're not moving. We're not progressing. We're not progressing. Amen. We are just stuck. And, 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 and being stuck means we're going backward because everything else is moving ahead of us because we're in the same place. We think about the same thing over and over. It doesn't add any value to us. It doesn't help us. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't cause growth inside of us spiritually nor emotionally. It doesn't do that. And so we have, our minds have to be transformed in the, in, in, in the scripture, Romans 12 verse two, the, the Bible talks about the renewing of the mind, not be conformed to this world and the things that will keep us down, the things that will keep us in one place, amen, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It is the desire of my heart for God to daily renew my mind because the Bible says also the apostle Paul, when I want to do good, evil presents itself. And so it is very natural for us to be, to, 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 to be uh, pulled back 
into that same place over and over if we're not progressing, if we're, our minds are not renewed, if we don't have a desire to press forward and to, to move forward in every areas of our lives. We should have the desire to, to progress, to move upward. There are, new, there are levels to this. We can't be stuck in one position for the rest of our lives because we will... Uh, our minds will be there, our bodies will be here, and our spirits will be there. And there are different levels that we must go. The Amen. If we want to achieve some things, if we want to spiritual growth, if we want to affect change, we cannot be stuck. Because we ought to be examples even for young ladies and young men and children that are coming up. They have to see something that they want to, I can say, you know what? I've seen this in this person. You've been, you've been going in an upward direction. You've been progressing. You've been moving forward. I've seen you doing some things. So I don't, I know I can do it too. Amen. And, and then that's how you be an example and affect change and generations. And so when you do this and this person sees it, then the other person will see that person and that's how we move forward amen amen out of the cycle the cycle of being stuck from generations to generations but i break that now in the name of jesus and i want you to break it too you can break it not because your grandma your mama your grandfather your uncle your aunties and your cousin do it don't mean you have to go around in the wilderness Amen. There's a promised land ahead of us. And we going around in circles does not get us to the promised land. We have to move forward. Amen. And, and in true enough a fact that God is our pillow by night, a cloud of pillow by night, and, and, and he's the sun by day. Amen. And so he wants us to move forward. Forward still is Jehovah's will. Amen. In spite of whatever that's going on around us. Amen. He wants us to move forward. So back to the the the, the story about um, the narrative about Peter. Rather, um, Peter Peter had to pull himself and recognize, hey, but this is Jesus speaking, and he, he Peter saw the very miracles that Jesus had already performed. So he knew that God, Jesus was well able. So even if there were no fish at all, he would make sure that there were fish for them to catch for their themselves and their family. Amen. God is a supplier of our needs. Amen. Whatever we want, it is in him. Amen. So if we look there all the time, we've been looking at this direction and nothing is going on and God say, okay, take a closer look. It means that he has already prepared the way. He has already um, uh, prepared a table before us. Even in the very presence of our enemies, he has prepared a table before us. I'm like, God, I'm not going over there. They're always doing this to me. It's crazy. I feel, I feel, I don't feel good when I'm in that company. I don't feel good when I go over there on the other side. Amen. But he's saying go. He's saying do it. And so our obedience is what's necessary for us to get our breakthroughs, for us to be unstuck. It is time for you to be unstuck. It's time for you to break that cycle. Amen. And, and progress and move forward and launch out into the deep. Amen. I want to encourage you that your present situation is not God's intention for your life. It is not God's intention for your life to be the same. Ten years ago, it's the same. It, it shouldn't be the same ten years. If you got married ten years ago, today your marriage should be functioning at a different level. Amen. There should be a, a higher purpose. Amen. In your life and in your unity. We, we shouldn't be going backward. Amen. We should be going higher and moving forward and trying to help other people because God has helped us. Amen. We have gone through the processes and we have come out and even though we're still going through it, but we're so much better, so much stronger. And now we can use our marriage and our situations as an example and as a testimony to others. Amen. The Bible said we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so our lives day to day should be a progression. Amen. So a testimony can be seen from our lives. Amen. Our present situation is not God's intention for your life. Amen. Amen. The Bible say, now, and I'll get the scripture for you. The Bible say he wishes above all that we are prosperous and, and we're in good health. 
Our third John and two, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. God wants our soul to be prosperous, but he wants us to have the necessary things that we need and we desire. If we will just be obedient to him, if we will just continue to add his word and apply his word in our lives, amen, and just move forward in him and get out of the mentality and the, the spiritual mentality, emotionality, the emotion, <laughs> the emotional, um, you know, ability of being stuck. We don't want to be stuck. Amen. Amen. I, and, and I want to tell you this too, because you know, we go through certain things and I'll tell you, I'll give you this little example about, I remember my grandmother. Oh my goodness. She always put her glasses at a particular spot when she takes it off. Always put her glasses at a particular spot and she will, she will be looking for her, her glasses all the time at that particular spot. Sometimes she will leave her glasses somewhere else. But because her mentality and her mind is just stuck at that particular spot where she places her glasses, she will go, where did I do with my glasses? I put my glasses right here. So he, she would say, um, you know what? You, did you take my glasses up? And all her grandkids and her children that will come around, oh, you moved my glasses and, and I need my glasses now. Not recognizing that she did place her glasses somewhere else. Perhaps thinking about the grandchildren messing with it when they come over. Amen. I'm probably breaking it. But because she was just so adamant that she placed it here. So when I say you can be looking at the thing, you can be looking for the same thing. You can be looking at the thing in one position because that's where your mind is. It's at one place. I did this right here. It's supposed to be here. When it's not here, it's over there. And so, and so I, I'm using that as, 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 a, as, a, as an example because it is so in, in the other areas of our lives. Amen. We're always looking for the answer here, but the answer is not here. The answer is over there. And so get out of our comfort. That's it right there. Getting out of our comfort zone. We have to get out of our comfort zone. Amen. And tap into something else. Tap into what God wants us to get into. He wants to lift us up. He wants to, he wants to, he wants us to progress. He wants us to move forward to higher heights and deeper depths in him. And so, and that requires intimacy because we have to trust God and we can't trust what we don't, who we don't know. Amen. That's it right there. We cannot trust who we don't know. I don't trust you to come into my home. <laughs> come on. Amen. Not everybody you trust to get into your inner circle. Amen. And because of that, when they tell us to do something, we're like, uh-uh. I don't, I don't think you're telling me the right thing. I don't, I don't trust you. So you, we have to develop that relationship. But then there are some people that I trust and I could share that with them. And if they tell me something, I'll, I'll be apt to say, I'm going to do it. You know what? I'm going to do it. Because I trust you. That's how God wants us to work. He wants us to trust him. But we have to be intimate with him because we have to get to know who he is. He is a God that never fails. His promises are sure. And that's what I want to share with you. So you are not stuck in the same thing over and over. Trust that he wants to take you to places you've never been before. He wants to take you higher and the, the higher you go, the more he wants to show you, the more he wants you to see, the more he wants to give you. Because when you're at that level, amen, when God lifts you up at that level, it's because on the lower level, he recognized that you have trusted his plan for your life. You have followed the instructions. You are obedient to the plan of God. And even though the process was hard and the storms came and the mountains were there on either side and Pharaoh was behind you and there was a Red Sea in front of you, you trusted God to take you through that process. Amen. And so he divided the waters. He, he made a way through the situations, even though they seemed impossible to you. Even though your neighbors went through the situation and they were drowned. Even though they, they went through the situation, they, they, they put in the applications and they were, it was denied. And you put in the application and it was approved. My God. It's because God, you were trusting God through the process. You weren't putting your, your, your trust in man. Amen. You were trusting God. And so he saw you through. 
And so he recognized, okay, you have graduated from that level. Amen. You have built that relationship with me. You are no longer stuck at the first level. You have come up a little. I've seen the desires of your heart. And so it's time for me to take you higher. God wants to take you higher. He wants to take you higher. He wants to unstuck you. Will you allow him to unstuck you today? That's what I want to ask you today. Will you allow God to unstuck you? You can do all things, but you can only do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God bless you today. I hope this word that I shared with you helped you in some way, will help you in, in, in every way. Um, you know, you know, it's important for us to have the mentality and, and have the mind of Christ in us. And the mind of Christ in us will propel us and allow us to move forward and not be stuck in the past. So many times the past has gotten a hold, a strange hold in us and will not let us go. Or rather, we have been stuck in the past and we won't let it go. We have to put it in the rear, rear mirror. Amen. When you're going forward, when you're driving you know, the only time you print back is because you don't want what's behind you to hit you. Oh, God Almighty. You don't want what's behind you to hit you. You'll print and make sure that nobody's coming to, to side sweep you or anything. Or even if you're going over in another lane, you are seeing in the mirror. But if you are going straight ahead, that's what you do. You look right ahead. Amen. Amen. It's not time to re reverse right now. Amen. It's 2019. And not only that, spiritually, you should be moving forward, upward, looking upward and moving forward. Amen. Because your help comes from God. God bless you on today. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Go ahead and share this and bless someone. Amen. God bless you. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you.